While splines and patches in 3ds Max both have subobject components that we have already touched on, because polymodeling is by far and away the most popular and widely used mesh modeling type in 3ds Max, it makes sense to spend time in a video looking at some of the extremely important subobject tools that become available to us when working with polygon models. To follow along as we take a look at these, open up the scene file entitled subobjecttools.max from your working files folder. Actually, before we get started, as we will be making good use of the graphite modeling toolset found on the ribbon UI in this video, I just want to left click and drag on the grab bar of the ribbon and dock it at the top of my viewport. To make it easier to access the tools we will work with here, we can also maximize it. To bring the graphite tools to life on the ribbon, we first of all need to have either an editable poly object or a mesh with an editable poly modifier applied to it selected. In our case, as we want to work with our editable poly tree trunk, let's click to grab that. In the ribbon, just as in the command panel, we can easily access any of the available subobject modes. There is, however, an if attached. We can access subobject modes in the ribbon if we have the modify tab in the command panel active. If I click on them without meeting that condition, you can see nothing happens. So let's click the modify tab and then in the ribbon, click to enter polygon subobject mode. Before starting any work, I just want to press the F4 key and enable the edge faces viewport display style. This means we can more easily see the selections we will be making. As a side note, whenever we know that we will be working exclusively in the ribbon UI, we may want to give ourselves a little more screen real estate by using the toggle command panel button, which does exactly what it says. It toggles the command panel off and on. As we are fine for screen space, I'm just going to leave this showing. Next to the initial polygon modeling panel, we have the modify selection panel, housing a number of tools that can help us modify our subobject selections. To demonstrate, let's make a simple single polygon selection by left mouse clicking. We can now, of course, move, rotate or scale our polygon, editing it in any manner we see fit. What though, if we want to select quite a number of the polygons adjacent to this? Well, we could hold down the control key and then left mouse click to select the ones we want to add to our current selection. However, doing this by hand isn't always practical especially if we have lots of small polygons in our mesh. Well, another option open to us would be to make use of the grow command, which, as you can see, expands the selection with each click of the mouse, adding any faces that are connected to the current selection. If we go too far, the shrink command will take the selection in the opposite direction for us. Let's switch our subobject selection over to edge mode and select one of the horizontal edges on our model. This will allow us to take a look at the loop and ring commands. When polygon modeling, these tools really are invaluable given the amount of time they can save us when it comes to making subobject selections. If you either aren't sure or sometimes get a little confused as to what constitutes a loop and what makes a ring, just hover your mouse over the tool name and after the initial tool description, you get a much larger tooltip that gives a nice graphical view of what each option does. If we click the loop command, what we select is a loop of unbroken connected edges running all the way around the model. This can now be manipulated using any of the transform tools. In fact, let's select the scale tool and push this loop out along the X and Y axes. We can also do something similar with the ring tool. Here though, I need to first of all grab a vertical edge, then I can hit the ring command. The resulting ring of upright edges that get selected are perfect for using in conjunction with the connect tool. Making use of the buttons on the ribbon as we have is completely fine, but oftentimes modelers are wanting to move quickly from one mesh tweak to another, which means that faster selection methods will always be welcome. To quickly grab a loop then, all we need to do is double click on an edge and we have a loop. To quickly grab a ring, we first of all select an edge and then holding down the shift key, left mouse click on an adjacent edge. Very nice and very quick indeed. It is good to know that these selection tools aren't exclusive to edges. If we come back into polygon mode and single click to select a polygon, 
I can shift click an adjacent polygon off to the side. And what we get is a horizontal polygon ring selection. If I reselect my single polygon and this time hold down shift and click a polygon either above or below, what I get is a vertical polygon ring. The ability to use these very quick keyboard shortcuts is made extra cool by the fact that, for some reason, when working in polygon mode, you can see over in the command panel that we don't actually have access to the ring and loop button commands as they are greyed out. We can use the buttons in the ribbon, but they both produce the same end result, which is to create a selection that consists of both a vertical and horizontal polygon ring. Sometimes during the process of shaping our models, we may find ourselves needing to relocate subobject components to different areas of our model. With the selection tools we have demonstrated here, that doesn't sound like too difficult a task. But what if we needed to do this without altering the actual shape or outline of our model? So for instance, let's select a ring of polygons on our tree using the shift click method and assume that we need this ring to be sitting a little lower on the geometry. As you can see, using the move tool most definitely does not work. Let's just press Ctrl Z to undo that move. Thankfully, we do have a very nice set of constraint tools in Max that can be used to accomplish what we want. We can find these inside the edit panel on the ribbon. To reveal them, let's hover our cursor over the edit panel so that it pops open. The constraint tools are clearly labelled at the bottom, giving us four operating modes from which to choose. None, Edge, Face and Normal. By default, None is what we work with when modelling in Max. In other words, no constraints are applied to our subobject selections. The other three will each produce a different kind of behaviour dependent upon our selection type and the mesh we are working with. To accomplish what we need to do here, Edge Constraint should work very nicely. So let's click to select that option. Now as we move the faces using the Move tool, because they are constrained and allowed to travel only along existing edges, we can relocate them with minimum alterations to the outline of our model. Do remember though, these constraint options are toggle buttons. We need to specifically deactivate them once our operation is completed. Otherwise, we are likely to cause ourselves all sorts of headaches whilst modelling. One final subobject tool we can look at before closing this video is the preview subobject tool. Switching between the different subobject types is something that a modeler is likely to be doing all day long. Having tools that can potentially speed us up will be helpful. The control to enable this particular option is found in the Polygon Modeling tab just below the subobject mode buttons themselves. This means that as we move our mouse over a piece of geometry, we get a preview of the subobject element that would be selected should we left click in this particular spot. So in edge mode, we only get edges preview. In polygon, we get polygons and so on. With multi preview enabled, however, we get a full preview for all subobject types according to which one is currently underneath our cursor's location. This mode tends to only work well if we are fairly close to the geometry we are working on. Another quick way of switching between subobject types, and probably the one that I personally use the most, would be to use the keyboard shortcuts of 1, 2, 3, and 4. As a lot of the time we spend modeling and refining our mesh will find us working in subobject modes, getting to know the tools available becomes an absolute must if we are to have any kind of productive workflow. In this video, we have focused almost exclusively on the selection tools available in subobject mode, as they really are the starting point from which all subobject modeling begins. Remember, however, that there are also lots of tools in the graphite modeling set that offer very powerful edit and modification functionality as well.